I just want to make three quick notes here with regard to the comparison between the TCP IP model and the OSI model. So let's take a look at these three short notes. The first one says that the TCP IP model emphasizes that as, as networking experts, we don't really concern ourselves with the presentation and session layers. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. You notice that the application layer here in the TCP IP model covers application, presentation, and session layers. We don't really care what goes on in here in presentation and session because those are the realm of software engineers and we don't really deal with them. We don't have networking devices that deal with them very much. So typically we sort of ignore them and the TCP IP model helps to point that out. Second, there are aspects of the internetwork layer in TCP IP that are concerned with some functions of the data link layer. Let's look at what I mean there. Here you notice, uh, and I didn't have this in the first chart, I just added it here for this chart to emphasize this, but the internetwork layer here kind of crosses over the data link layer and then the network access layer crosses over it. The data link layer, as we'll see later on, is actually a two-part layer. It's got two sub-layers in it that we'll, uh, we won't name right now, but we will in a later video. And so we kind of make that distinction and realize that there are some aspects that are physical uh, and then there are some aspects that are logical and they interact up here at the internetwork uh, part of the layer. The third item is that we usually don't reference the TCP IP layers by number, but it's extremely common to do so with the OSI numbers. And we do this constantly. Um, so you'll hear statements like this. Hey, I can't ping the router. I'll check layer one. What does that mean? Here's the interpretation. I need to check for some bad cables or connections. Right, layer one. I can't ping Google. Maybe it's a layer three problem. Right? Layer three, routers. Maybe I have a misconfigured router somewhere. Uh, is this a layer three switch or a layer two switch? In other words, does the switch only deal with frames or can it move some traffic between uh, what we call VLANs or virtual LANs that we'll talk about later on in the course. So we do use those numbers all the time and you kind of have to get used to at least one, two, and three as common ones and then quite often uh, four and seven. Uh, very rarely do you hear about layer five and six.